Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about classes and objects in PHP. Now, a lot of times in PHP, we're going to be dealing with different types of data. And in PHP, we have a certain set of data types that we can work with. So we can represent things like strings, which are just plain text. We can represent uh, whole numbers like integers and decimal numbers. We can also represent true false values like Booleans. But here's the problem is a lot of times when we're writing our PHP programs, we're not going to be able to represent everything just using like a single string or a single Boolean or a single number. Like there's a lot of like real world entities like in the real world that can't just be broken down into a single string or a single number. Like, for example, like we could represent something simple, like someone's age, for example, like I could create an age variable over here and I could set it equal to like 90, right? Maybe someone's 90 years old for something simple like that, like someone's age, we can easily represent it with, you know, something like a, a, a number, but there's a lot of things in the real world that can't be represented with just a number or a string or a Boolean. And essentially the problem is, is that we only have these, you know, three or four different data types. And so the types of information that we can represent and model in our programs is very limited. So PHP recognizes this problem, right? The problem that we can't represent everything in the real world just with a single string or number. So in PHP, we can actually create our own custom data types. And we can do that by creating things called classes. A class is essentially just a specification for a custom data type. So just like we have the string data type and like an integer data type, a Boolean data type, I could create my own custom data type that would allow me to model something in the real world, right? So a string, for example, represents like plain text. A number represents a number but I could create a custom data type to represent something like a phone, or I could represent like uh, a keyboard, or I could represent a water bottle. Like I could represent anything I could think of in the real world using a class because I'm able to create my own custom data type. So in this tutorial, we are going to create our own class, which like I said, is a custom data type and then we're gonna use that inside of our program. So let's say for the purposes of this tutorial that we're writing a piece of software for a library, right? So let's say that we want to you know, write some software that will help a library manage all of its books. So what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna create a book class. And this book class will basically allow us to represent and model books inside of our PHP program. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can create a class. I'm just gonna come down here in my PHP tags and I'm just gonna type class and then a space. And now we wanna type the name of the class that we wanna create. In my case, I'm gonna create a book class because I wanna be able to model a book inside of my program. And so I'm just gonna type book like that. And a lot of times when we're creating classes, people will use a capital letter. It's not necessary, but that's just kind of like a pretty common convention. Then I'm gonna type an open and close curly bracket and I'm just gonna enter a few times. So inside of this open and close curly bracket, we can start writing our custom data type. We can start creating our class. Now, whenever we create classes in PHP, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna take this book and we're gonna break it up into a series of attributes. So remember by default in PHP, we have like strings, we have numbers and we have Booleans. So we can represent all of that information by default. But when we create a new data type, generally what we're gonna do is create the new data type based off of those other data types. So for example, with this book class, what I wanna do is define a series of attributes that represent a book. And so what I can do is I can actually start thinking of what different attributes are going to make up a book. Let's try to think of some. Um, I think a good set of attributes would be a title, an author, and a number of pages. So every book has a title, every book has an author, and every book has a number of pages. So inside of this book class, I can basically say that every book should have a title, an author, and a number of pages. And I can do that by defining attributes. So the way I can create attributes is I can just come in here and I can say var var, and then I can make a dollar sign and I'm gonna type out the name of the attribute. So like I said, a book is gonna have a title and I'm gonna type a semicolon. A book is also going to have an author and a book is also gonna have a number of pages. So I'm just gonna type pages. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm telling PHP that I wanna create a new book data type. And this book data type is gonna be composed of a title, an author, and pages. So 
every book inside of our program will have a title, an author, and pages. And so essentially this class is a specification. So it's like a blueprint for creating a book inside of my program. What I can do now is I can come down here below this class declaration and I can actually create a book inside of my program. So I could model a real book in my PHP program and we can create a book in our program much like we would create a variable in our program. So I can make this dollar sign and I could just call this like book one, for example, and I'm gonna set this equal to new book, just like that. And essentially what this is doing is it's creating a new book data type and it's storing it inside of this book variable. So up here, we created this book class and this is basically just a blueprint, it's a template for what a book is inside of our program. And down here, I created an actual book. And this is what we call an object. So an object is an instance of a class. Like I said, a class is a blueprint for our book, right? The book class is basically just defining what a book is. And down here, I'm creating an actual book. And so because this is an actual book, I can give it its own title, its own author, and its own number of pages. I could come down here and I could say, book one and I can make a dash and a greater than sign and I can say title and I'm just gonna set this equal to something. So I could say the title of this book is gonna be Harry Potter. So let's say that this is a Harry Potter book. And I could do this for each of the attributes. So I could also say book one author and the author of the Harry Potter books is JK Rowling. And then finally we can say book one and pages, and we can give this a number of pages. So let's say it has 400 pages. So essentially what I did is I created a book in my program and I gave that book a title, I gave that book an author, and I gave that book a number of pages. So what I could do is I could actually come down here and I could print some of this information out. So I could echo out like book one title. And now this is gonna print out the title of book one. So we should get Harry Potter. And you'll see over here, we're printing out Harry Potter. I could do the same thing for the other attributes. So like the author. Now we're gonna be printing out the author of book one, which is JK Rowling. So before in my program, before I created that book class, I had no way of representing a book, right? I had no way of like storing or representing or modeling a book inside of my program. But now since I created this book class, I basically created a template for what a book is. I created a book data type. And now I can use that book data type to create variables. So now this book one variable is actually storing a book object. And remember, an object is just an instance of a book. So we created this Harry Potter book and actually why don't we come down here and we'll create another book. So I'm actually just gonna copy this whole thing and we'll paste this down here. So in addition to creating a Harry Potter book, let's say we wanted to create a Lord of the Rings book. I'm actually gonna change this to book two. So instead of being called book one, I'm changing this to book two. And I can do the same thing, I can say new book. And now over here, we're gonna change this. So this is gonna be a Lord of the Rings book. And the author is Tolkien. And let's say the Lord of the Rings has like 700 pages. So essentially what I'm doing now is I'm creating a new book and this time it's a Lord of the Rings book. The author is Tolkien and it has 700 pages. So here I have book one. This is a Harry Potter book. Um, the author is JK Rowling. Down here I have book two and this is a Lord of the Rings book. So I could do the same thing for book two. I could print out like book two and the author of book two is gonna be Tolkien. So now we're printing out Tolkien. So just like I can create two strings, like I could come down here in my program and I could create like string one and this would be like whatever. And I could create another string like string two and this is gonna be whatever. Just like I can create two strings in my program, I can also create two books. So we basically created a new data type and it's important to know the difference. So up here we have a class. A class is basically just a blueprint. It's a specification for what a book is in our program. We're basically defining the new data type. Down here, we're creating what are called objects. 
An object is an instance of a class. So an object is an actual book. So we have an, a book object and it has the title Harry Potter, the author JK Rowling and 400 pages. Down here we have another book object with the title Lord of the Rings, Tolkien and 700. So these are both books, but they have different titles, they have different authors and they have different pages. And that is the beauty of classes and objects is we can take something complex like a book and we can represent it inside of our programs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.